Part 3 of The True Teaching of Jesus, The Pine Cone, and Masonic Secrets of the Silver Bullet. Civilizations were struggling to update their calendars and follow the seasons shifted around by Jehoshua's resurrection. But kings and leaders were also dealing with populations that did not want to give up their traditions and old calendars, which is why there were two concurrent calendars going on at the same time all over the world, from Babylon to China, recorded by the Jews and the Bible in Peru and by the Mayans. The Mayans themselves realized their Olmec calendar, which we call the Mayan calendar, became obsolete because it was based on the pre-Jesus Christ resurrection, 360-day moon and solar year. In fact, the Mayans and Aztecs did create a new calendar, precisely measured and calculated to the current 365-day year constellations, and ecliptic, but was infamously all destroyed and burned by the conquistador, who themselves were Freemasons, aware of the true ecliptic. And when they found out the Mayans not only knew of Jehoshua, because he did what the Catholic Church did without doing what the Catholic Church did, which was fulfill his mission to teach knowledge peacefully because knowledge is power, and the greatest power is knowing and validating God in you and others, which is not the M.O. of the Catholic Church. I digress. The Mayans recalibrated the calendars to the new celestial 365-day-a-year ecliptic better than the Gregorian calendar of today. So, they destroyed it and left us as a ruse and dead end, the Mayan calendar, which is why none of the prophecies of that calendar have accurately come to pass. And if a signage is 2,160 years and Aquarius does not begin until 2,600, then the difference between those numbers is 440, meaning if Jesus is Pisces, and all of this started happening around the start of the age of Pisces. All of this would have taken place in 440 AD. A far cry from the institutionalized norm being thrown around of 0 to 33 AD. And, which coincidentally, is the music industry's current standard set at 440. However, if we go back to the astronomical data, we see the true start and length of the sign of Pisces from 654 BC to 2600 CE, an astounding 32 centuries, and when Jehoshua and all of his resurrection really went down, which was actually between the years 743 and 650 pre-JCR, meaning we are separated not by 2,000 years, but by 2,700. Where did those 700 lost years go? And you may be wondering, this must all be written and recorded somewhere. To which the answer is again, a resounding, yes. All over the world, every culture, every king and royal astronomer, from every civilization across the world throughout history, records how they had to update their calendars all around the same time, around these dates of 700 to 650 pre-JCR, from 360 days to 365, and with holy new sun and moon paths. And, some kings and royal libraries record how they failed to update their populations, who refused to accept the new calendars, or even match their calendars to the heavens, and their solve? Well, this is recorded too. Many just simply scrubbed the slate clean, started at zero, deleting the hundreds of years that would clearly be missing in the annals. Though again, 
The evidence is still clearly there, but they just simply call these lost epochs of time the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages. And just in 2016, a set of maps have shown us proof that such a worldwide cataclysm event could take place, and indeed it did, because of one geographic land area and civilization called Tartaria. And just like the Arya in Nazaria, the name of the Nazarenes from whom Jehoshua comes means the connection or Nas to the Aryans, who, when facing extreme persecution for their beliefs in the Jesus Christ from the newly formed Constantine Christian religion, and the irony is operative here, the remnants of Jehoshua's school escaped Judea to what later became the Tartarians of Tartaria, changing their name from Nas Arya to Tart Arya, or the Tree of Arya, descending from what is the Proto Celtic Taras, Proto Norse Tar for tear the Proto-Indo-European Therese for root. These different roots form the tree that was the Tartarian Empire, bespeaking its appeal to people from all nations and walks of life. Yet, it was the revelation of their civilization in 2016 through these maps that proves just recently the human race experienced a worldwide cataclysm. According to Tartarian, Mayan, and other occulted Masonic texts, records show it was a global mudslide Jehoshua's resurrection caused, which soon, within the next three years, another archaeological discovery will corroborate. And this mudslide is what covered all of the old stone monuments all over the world, including the statues of the Moai, the pyramids of Northern and Mesoamerica, just to list a couple. This also explains why all ancient stone monuments were seemingly buried, though not in the slow geological progression of time, but instantaneously and devastatingly. The Catholic Church, or what is called the Catholic Church today, was started by priesthoods who kept and collected these records. Finding the world in such disarray and population seemingly dragged back to caveman times, this Catholic priesthood saw a massive opportunity, and thus was so eager to claim not only the true Jesus Christ teaching for itself, but also all of the old Tartarian architecture, it claims, are its cathedrals. However, these cathedrals were no cathedrals or places of divine worship, but very elaborate and sophisticated power plants that harnessed EM energy from the invisible ether, just like a Tesla tower, an Egyptian pyramid, or obelisk. If you look for the inventory lists, the manpower needed along with the necessary supplies and the professionals and means to convey the materials, the budgets to pay the carpenters, or even the thousands of masters already mastered enough to teach the even more thousands upon thousands of apprentices to keep the massive power plant buildings going these do not exist. Down to even the smallest unknown towns, for example, in Mexico, where the people to date clearly show no sign of ever having had such an expertise because they are so mal and undereducated that they clearly could not have built at any point. Not even today, even with modern technology and especially going back generations, because things get better with time, not worse, these Tartarian cathedrals. 
Because if this is how smart they are today, imagine how less smart they were back in those days. I would like to preemptively explain that I feel I am justified in saying so because I myself come from one of these small, little, forgettable, and insignificant towns in Mexico with a prized massive stone and marble church for which there is no picture, record, or inventory list explaining its construction. It has simply just always been there. And trust me when I say these people from my town are severely mal and undereducated because my mother gave her life bringing me to the United States to not be raised in that town. The church continues to this day to be the prized gem of that town. My mother was killed six months after we landed in a U.S. murder capital. However, after a state proficiency test graded me gifted and talented, and an interview with NASA in fifth grade, I was educated in one of America's top five Catholic schools in one of America's most exclusive zip codes. I went to school with the families who built up Silicon Valley into what it is today. The families who literally created the software and devices you're using to watch this with. Thus, billionaires, many of whom were Catholic, and many of whom taught me some of these true Masonic teachings of the Jesus Christ because they were practicing it. I became an American citizen three days after 9-11, and genetically I am 66% European white and 33% Native Mexican indigenous. And the Catholicism practiced by the super elite was this silver bullet pine cone doctrine. In contrast, in Mexico, it's more like a cult. But that's what you get when you filter out all the truth because all that's left is ignorance. So, while I know the rich to enjoy the truth of the pine cone silver bullet of Jesus Christ for happiness, liberation, and a powerful sense of entitled wealth of consciousness, which is objectively as much a universal birthright for you as it is for them. For the poor, robbed of the self-redemptive truth of the pine cone, it becomes a means of punishment, suffering, and a guilty conscience. On top of that, we are taught to believe these uneducated poor people with the most pitiful schools were capable with their horses and carriages of carrying massive blocks of stone for these massive stone and marble constructions based on sacred geometry principles sound frequencies, and cymatics in these small, forgettable, insignificant towns and villages? Well, if you believe they did, that's adorable. Because the pictures, the inventories, the list of names of the carpenters, it all does not exist. Not even for those in France. Because the point is, what is true for my town and the people in it. It's true for almost all of us everywhere in the world. Because there are so many more people who come from humble beginnings than billionaire ones. And the division is hurting them, I attest to you, as much as the rest of us. Further, the Koinobi texts of the Egyptian priesthood who initiated Jehoshua record how Jehoshua his people, and all cultures all over the world became so well learned and aware of this secret knowledge and symbols which combine mathematics, physics, and electrical currents all residing in the human body and out in the invisible energy of the cosmos. They clearly were and lived far more advanced than we could ever imagine. This knowledge was even known and practiced by Native Americans, as exemplified in the totem poles, echoing the spinal column and the many animal myths associated with Jesus Christ. Jehoshua is said to have lived in the last days of the working power plant of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which acted 
like a Tesla tower, emitting energy to the obelisks that dotted the world then, like today, and harnessed just the same by the Catholic cathedrals, which clearly illustrate through their constructions, whose stones act the same as those in the pyramids in harnessing EM energy to the beautiful interior-exterior engravings, which show their knowledge of cymatics, the visible phenomenon of sound upon vibration and matter, from the iron-spiked pyramid, cone peak towers to the arches, and sacred geometry placed inner columns, which are all meant to amplify electromagnetic energy harnessed from the field and which were all part of the world culture of the pyramids. Yes, according to the Masonic texts, the supposed Catholic cathedrals all over the world and the one from my town are all remnants of the pyramid and obelisk cultures too, because in my town, and this is true for all of the countries claimed by the Catholic secret priesthood, there is no pictorial or editorial record of the church being built. They simply put a plaque on it saying, founded in such and such year. Found dead, yes, but not built in such and such year. As if that were not astounding enough, the Masonic texts also make clear that Jehoshua was fighting an enemy, an enemy that called itself the one and only God. A statement which, for viewers and initiates of this channel, is absurd. As God is all, meaning you and me, and thus there is no one and only one God. God is all, all is God. And who was this enemy? Recent archaeological discoveries that are themselves pre recorded in the Masonic texts but now being corroborated by new finds, are just now being revealed to the rest of humanity. That showcase, evidence that Jehoshua was fighting against not one god, but a collective of self-called gods, who were extraterrestrial and not of this planet, and wanted to enslave humanity. That we have already been invaded by an alien race, and have been fighting them since Jehoshua. Jehoshua discovered the serpent science was the way to free all of us and bringing earth back to the paradisical domain it is meant to be. Who were these extraterrestrial invaders bringing this Abrahamic mosaic religion of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? They are called the Elohim, by the Sumerians the Anunnaki. And this class of extraterrestrial alien gods were different from the people who practiced the serpent science and wisdom, and who are the true native Terrans, called the Hindu Nagas, the Mexican Nagual, the Sumerian Ningishida, the Egyptian Apophis, the Dogen Leber, the Greek Ophis, the Australian Rainbow Serpent Creator and the Christian Jesus. These native Terrans were the practitioners of the serpent science and also called magicians, including the very Nagal or half-human, half-snake beings of magical powers in the book of Adam and Eve, wherein we see Adam and Eve struggling to accept that they must live in the filthy imprisonment the Elohim Anunnaki put them in. You find Adam and Eve in the book of Adam and Eve, for lack of better words, hating their confines, desiring instead to leave their God, Yahweh, for the half-human, half-snake cities and towns. Yahweh is himself described in multiple traditions as a reptilian. And, it is extremely important to denote that in both religious and Masonic texts, there is a difference between the native Terran serpents and 
the extraterrestrial Draco reptilians. In Adam and Eve, their Elohim Yahweh slave handlers are clearly draconian reptilians, while the native Terran Nagav were friendly toward Adam and Eve, welcoming them to freely enjoy their riches, food, security, abundance, prosperity, and bliss, telling them it was their birthrights. Sound familiar? It is written in the skies because of Jupiter, the amplifier of situations, soon conjunct Uranus, the harbinger of paradigm shifts, in Aries, the spearheader of a new norm, that by the end of 2024, there will be an archaeological find that will prove and corroborate this true meaning of Jesus Christ, the holy wisdom of the serpent science, effectively, hopefully, ending the tyranny we have known thus far, even Adam and Eve desired and expressly pled to go join and live with the native Terran serpents. What is more, the native Terrans take out the serpent, is you, is me. Clearly, you and me are the native Terrans, and we were cut off from our true wisdom, symbolized by the serpent. A serpent that unlocks the next step of evolution, from our human egos to our evolved avatars, of the one and same God, which you are and I am, via the sacred serpent, and the halo its venom ignites in our pineal gland, our inner pine cone, and miraculous silver bullet. In the next occult secrets revealed, we will discover exactly how you can unlock your own germ, or seed of life and blood of Christos, or serpent seed, in your holy grail, as the moon traverses the constellational backdrop, depending on your constellational natal lunar sign, not the zodiacal one, but the true astronomical data-based one. You get one to three, sometimes five days of lunar visitations, every 29.5 days, during which time your serpent seed is energized. But first, you must activate it which is again done mentally using the specific breath meditation outlined earlier in this series. And upon the dates the moon visits your natal lunar sign, which for your convenience are outlined for each sign, including weekdays for the year of 2023 in the next video. And if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed that the moon will be visiting Auriga a phenomenon so rare that it only occurs every 18 years. And if you watched our video on the moon called the moon code, you know this is to be an auspicious number for the moon. Not only is this celestial event so rare and auspicious, but the individuals amongst us who were born with a lunar natal auriga are connected directly to their light, to their aura. This also means that, whether you are prepared or not, light, pure light, will be permeating our atmosphere and globe. And, as light reveals what is hidden in the dark, there are prophecies that tell of major announcements or revelations from governments that will trigger mass anger and spiritual hysteria. Starting on October 5th, which if you are watching this channel, you will be prepared for. So, how does it feel to know the truth? And now that you know, what are you going to do with it for yourself and the world you desire for yourself? Be sure to drop it in the comments and add to the thriving conversation. I read each one and sometimes add my own two cents or paragraph to it because it's your evolution that becomes mine and I can't do this without you. So be sure to subscribe to join the growing community of learned initiates and truth seekers to, one day, truly make the world a better place. And if you would like to support me in keeping this channel thriving, 
consider becoming a member. With perks like early access to podcasts of audios that will turn into the video format. And with your support, a monthly astronomical message on the sun, moon, the planets, and which days for you to focus on for the continued energization of your seed of life from the Holy Grail to the Silver Bullet. Be sure to also visit our store and pick up a handmade mala made by yours truly with butterscotch resin beads from Tibet and high quality crystal gemstones meant to help you connect your mind with your breath, with earth below and the moon above with a different gemstone for each chakra and composed of 108 beads which if you watch the moon code is an auspicious sacred geometry and moon earth number available while the very limited supply lasts a deep thank you and special shout out for your super thanks youtube doesn't tell me who it is any help goes a long way for this one man production until next time trust and believe that it is okay to be you the most beautiful you there ever was there is and that there ever will be because you are not a story that can be told twice and there will never again be a stage for you to perform but this one right here right now so be you the most beautiful you